Look at this. Look at this little baby. He is so freaking cute. He's so cute, but he's so loud. Why do you bark so much? You don't have to be embarrassed, but still don't. Thank you. It's because you're barking so much. Oh, my baby. I love you, too. I love you, too. You want to stay in here with mommy, right? I love you. I love you. <laughs> well, welcome to this edition of First Impression February. So today I have a very special first impressions for y'all because I'm going to be first impressioning a whole bunch of new things for y'all. So here are the things I'm going to be reviewing today. I have today the Benefit Brow Contour Pro, a infallible never fail eyeliner from L'Oreal Paris, of a Wonder Kiss lip plumping gloss, and I have the Vegan Love eyeshadow palette from Kat Von D to review today. So I'm going to go through with each one of them. At the end of this first impressions, I have a black beauty profile on, the, it's going to be on Andre Leon Talley. If you don't know who Andre Leon Talley is, let's think fashion week. Let's think everything. If you want to know how I use these products to get this look or to learn more about Andre Leon Talley, you can just keep on watching. Thanks. So the first thing out of the new products basket I have right here. So the first thing I need to try, because I always do brows first, as y'all know, is the Benefit Brow Contour Pro. So these retail for $34. Um, I believe this one came from Macy's. And during the, um, they had like a beauty flash sale. And during the beauty flash sale, it was half off, which brought it down to $17. So it's, it's half off and it's a really good deal for this. I have seen a lot of people kind of raving about this though. So I love their brow products. Um, I actually did a while back a brow tryout kit from um, from Benefit. And I also had the uh, I had a brow Christmas set that came a while back. So I'll link, I'll put both of those two on, on cards up here somewhere. This is a four in one contour pencil, the shade Brown Black Deep, which obviously brows high. Um, it's, it's on the back. This four in one contour pencil instantly gives you clean shape brows with definition and dimension. It has like a little mini tutorial on the back of how to use it, what to do to use them. Which I love this about Benefit. See, they included design on the inside. Y'all know how I am with little touches like that. The rest of it looks like a regular Benefit product. They always have that kind of carnival-y vibe with all the little, like it looks like a carnival to me, like an old school carnival. It, oh, this is so weird. So this is the product itself. It looks like, I don't know if you guys had this or if I'm showing my age again, but um, we used to have these pins that were these big fat pins and then you would click, the, these would all be colors and you would click it down and you would show, it would be like, okay, now you can write with red. Okay, now you can write with black. Like you would click each color down and that that's exactly what this reminds me of. So on each one of them, they have, yeah, you see like the writing on the side of it. Y'all probably can't read it, but it says like lighter shade, deeper shade, definer, and highlighter it's it that's i've that's kind of revolutionary i've never seen anything like this for brows before in my life i've never seen anything like this for the face period before in my life packaging wise i really like the silver it literally goes with all the rest of the benefit things it looks like the cabral it looks like the uh uh precisely my brow and the goof proof brow pencil they all kind of fit in so like you could set the, all these out and it would look like a complete set or put them all in a cup and it would be a complete set all right let's see what this is telling me to do Start with the lighter shade. Fill in brow with lighter shade from start to arch. So this, okay, it says the 4-in-1 contour pencil instantly gives you a clean, clean shape brows with definition and dimension. Slowly twist for more selected shade. Oh, I see. That is so freaking cool. If you look at this, it's not hard to figure out which one is which. They literally put lighter shade on it. So you just push this down. So that being said, y'all, as I'm doing this, I want to say that I think that is really good for somebody who's not super confident in their ability to do their brow because it just makes it where it's like, it just makes it where it's it's like you, um like it's just easier for you to be able to control it and know what you're doing to do it that way. Okay, so sorry. I know this looks crazy right now, but I'm telling y'all there's a reason behind it. I don't know why. Going back and watching videos, I always notice how uneven my brows are. Like one will be tremendous and one will like not be there at all. And so I was trying to figure out a way to get them even. And so I looked up a bunch of tutorials and stuff to try to figure out what I'm doing wrong. And I kept seeing this technique, the unibrow technique, like over and over again. So I was like, this looks so dumb. But I was like, okay, I got to figure something out because I'm so tired of my brows being so uneven in every video. I tried this this weekend and it worked really, really good. My brows have never looked better than they did. So I'm going to do it again. I just use a really cheap one. Like this is the ColourPop one that I actually got in an Ipsy bag. 
and I just use that to go straight across and I don't know how it works or what it does but it makes your brows even I don't know why maybe the straight line helps you see what the difference is anyway whatever so it's a lighter shade which is this one right here oh no that's the highlighter crap how do you even mess this up so this is the lighter shade it has this little thing at the end I guess that's like the lighter shade is out I gotta twist this so you just had to twist, you twist the pen this way to get more product out. That's, this is, this is genius. It's genius. It's weird. But if you can figure out how to use it, like I'm trying to do right now, it's genius. So I'm going to go from the, I said start to arch. Now, of course, this time is my first time using it. It's not going to be perfect, but I am excited to try it. End with the deeper shade. Fill in brow with deeper shade from art, arch to end. Pros no. Combining lighter and deeper shades is the key to natural looking depth and dimension. Okay. So now this is cool. While I was on the phone, I kind of messed with this a little bit. In order to get the shade out, like this one is the lighter one still, you're just going to press the other one that you need and it'll shoot back in. See? So this is the deeper color now. I wish uh, Benefit just a word of advice. You guys should probably tell people that they're going to need to take more of it out in the beginning just so we know to do it before we start using our so now i'm going to go from the arch to the in with the deeper shade if i remember correctly right now we're just supposed to be uh filling it in but of course i gotta outline it too i just did my brow so like my sharp my sharp point is going to need to be like created because i didn't really do it i mean i kind of shaved that part off because i like a really sharp point on the end so uh, i always take off like the last little bit of hair i'll tweeze it or shave it off because i uh, like to like make a point on it on the end you know i just like it better but let me actually swatch both of them so i can show you guys. so this is the deeper shade for me this is the deeper shade and this is the lighter shade so okay it's a little lighter um it's not a different color though it's like just a different you of the one that you already had define and clean edges okay stroke 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 definer from start to end blend gently above brow okay so they have two different options they have below the brow start to end blend gently definer so definer definer is this one here so i go with definer which is should be a little bit lighter from what i'm understanding okay so this is the definer shade Ugh. The final shade is like an orange. I don't understand why it's orange. That's such an ugly color. Okay, anyway, so the defining color is this orange, and they want me to go from start to end underneath the brow. So I guess this part is kind of what I do with the Benefit, um, with the Boing Concealer every other time. That's what I use. So I guess that's what this is supposed to take the place of. This is going to be the bomb to travel with. I can tell you that, though. You don't have to bring so many things. So I have that, the bottom one done, which I have to say, using this brush... It's not really blending it that much at all. But since it's that orange color, honestly, you're not going to really notice it anyway. So, I mean, I get that it's a little harder to blend. Above the brow, they want you to go from arch. And see, guys, I'm getting frustrated right now because I'm so used to doing it my way that I can fly through it. Like right now, this feels like it is taking so freaking long to do. But again, it's just because I'm used to doing it my way and it gets... I get through it pretty quickly okay i don't really get the definition that i usually get with my concealer so it says apply highlighter directly beneath your arch and blend outward okay so there's a highlighter shade as well this is the highlighter shade all right so i'm gonna swatch the highlighter shade too okay so the highlighter shade is a little more orange than the um the finer shade but here's the thing with this that i already don't like i guess they did some kind of research to see that um orange goes best with the dark but i always outline my brows in like a really light color so this orange stuff is not giving me the same vibe that i like to have usually so i'm putting the highlighter in the arch of my brow and it said blend outward <clears throat> okay so i'm gonna be honest with y'all right now in the process of using it i don't like it I mean, it's okay. Louie, if you do not stop barking, baby, I'm gonna have to like, you're gonna have to come in here with mama. I don't have kids with two legs, but my four-legged child is so bad. I don't know what to do. So I thought it looked a little sparse at the top. So I went back in with that deeper shade and just kind of drew a little more in. See, to get that much cleaner line right there. I am gonna use this product, but I'm gonna have to kind of twist the way it's used a little bit because it's just the way they did it. 
the way they want you to use it doesn't really work for me personally i'm not saying it won't work for everybody but it just didn't work for me personally okay guys so my brows are finished i'm hoping throughout the process of doing the rest of this look i'm going to like them a little more than i do because i really wanted to like that product but it just, to me, isn't that special as of right now. Hopefully, it'll get better. So, my second thing I need to try is the, the Kat Von D Vegan Palette, which is this right here. Vegan Love Palette or some crap like that. I don't know what it was called. Can I find this palette online, like, anywhere? But I paid $14.99 for it. Um, I'll look it up and I'll get the actual price and I'll put it somewhere down here. So, I got it for $14.99 at Ross. This is the retail price. And I know a lot of people are on the fence about Kat Von D, are not on the fence, but just straight up hate her. And she sold all of her stock in her brand and gave it to Kinza Beauty, Kinzo Beauty, some brand, I have no idea who they are. So I don't know, I wasn't that familiar with her when she was hot in the streets. By the time I got into Kat Von D, she had kind of, her moment had done passed already and whatever. As a matter of fact, every Kat Von D item I own, which I own two palettes, three palettes, I own the Shade and Light, I own the Interstellar, and I own this one now. And I got them all. The other two came from TJ Maxx. This one came from Ross. So, Kat's Brightest Ever Vegan Shades. Vegan Love Eyeshadow Palette. There's a big misconception that vegan makeup can't be higher performance. And Kat Von D Beauty is here to change that. We love animals just as much as we love makeup, which is why we never stop pushing the boundaries to create the most perfect products imaginable. Hashtag Kat Von D Beauty. Hashtag Vegan Love Palette. Packaging is gorgeous. I love her emo kind of vibe. With uh, I love, like this would be a nice tattoo. So it's got these metallic, the metallic silver writing. On the top, you have all the shades also with the metallic writing. And let's take it out of the packaging. So you could tell this was a high price palette. I mean, it's just made really well. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It's made very, very well. The inside, they do have little the little stars on it. The back has all the stuff I just read, all again in that beautiful metallic silver writing. This is the palette. It's really pretty. It's, again, like I said before, it's heavy. It feels expensive. Um, okay, it doesn't have anything here. It doesn't have anything there. Same thing that's written on the back of the box is written here. Oh, it's magnetic. That's cool. Not gonna lie, y'all. That's cool. So this is the palette itself. Oh, I don't like the palette, though. Best apply with fingers. Oh, I hate when people say that. So this is the palette itself. These are the shades. And this, the mirror is a big heart, which is beautiful. And it has, so it's like a fully glitter palette. Like there's no matte shades at all. These are the shades here. So I'm gonna go and do the matte parts I can do. And then I'll be back to go over uh, to use these shades. So let me go do the rest of my look real quick. It says, oh, just so y'all know, if you want to know, um, the matte I used for my uh, eye look is the Morphe 350M palette, which is like the neutral brown um, matte palette. Everything is matte. Um, I'm looking at Compassion, not Compa Compassion, uh, Equality as a highlighter shade, which is I'm going to put at the top of my brow. But for the lid, I don't know what to do. They said apply it best with fingers, so I'm going to try that. And if it doesn't work, then I'll have to get a flat shader brush. So, Empathy. So, this is Empathy. Oh, I like this. Okay. That's pretty. That is a pretty eyeshadow. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Empathy is like a really pretty purple, but it has like a blue and a silver shift to it. Like, it's not just... You kind of see it in the little swatch on my finger. It ain't skipping on pay payout. I like this. That's really pretty. So I'm now going to go with Activist, which is this yellow shade. And I'm going to put that on the inner corner just to see what it looks like. Ooh, okay. So, wow. It is yellow for real. So that's the color. That's the yellow. And I'm going to get a brush just to blend these two together. But really, they did apply well with the fingers. I never have a shade that I think applies well with my fingers ever. But th these, are, these are nice. And then I'm going to go with equality which is this white shade here and i'm going to use that as a brow bone highlight again very pretty man i wish that girl wasn't such an idiot because she could make some products like this is pretty so even though this is a full glitter palette and even though it's supposed to be applied with the uh applied with the hand with the fingers i do always blend something together so like this i need to blend this together so we are going to check for our blendability with these shades okay so i did a little bit of blending so this is unblended this is blended it's not blending very well it's not the best at blendability but i'm not completely mad at it because this palette i don't think is meant to be blended had i done what i was originally planning to do and just done all one color on the lid it would have been you know we wouldn't have had to blend it and it wouldn't have been a problem 
Also equality, I know it said it does best with the finger, but since I have to put that as a brow bone highlight, I need it to specifically go somewhere and uh, fingers can't really do that. That's pretty. I'm just going to blend everything together really quickly. I'm gonna go in with this big one and I'm going to just drag that really dark brown up above that beautiful purple. Okay, so that is that. On that, I'm going to do one more new thing, one more new product from this one. Okay, so this is the Infallible Eyeliner from L'Oreal. Duh, price point. So this um, eyeliner originally cost $8.99, which is a deal in itself. Obviously, it's a whole eyeliner for $7. So I got it on sale at Ulta for $0.90. Cents. Less than a dollar. Would I have left it? Obviously not. So the reason I always try to have at least one eyeliner, one white eyeliner, is because it opens your eyes so much when you line the bottom rim with white. I actually learned that from Tyra Banks on the Tyra Banks show. They had a Tyra Banks show apparently a while back. Packaging, it's L'Oreal. It's going to be cheap. It's not super, you know, high end, whatever, whatever. It's just a regular plastic thing. And it was kind of open anyway. So, okay. So it has a little smudger on the back. Anyway, so I love the packaging of the actual stick. It's pretty. It's really pretty, actually. It's got the silver trim. Oh, it's hard to open. Oh, okay. So, ooh, okay. So this is the liner itself. It is like a cream liner, it feels like. Oh. That is so good for tight lining, y'all, because you don't want to be dragging, as you know. Okay, so I'm just going to take the liner and I'm going to line the inner rim. Very smooth, very smooth. Okay, so, no, I was going to say I wish it was a little brighter, but I think it looks good because you don't want a super bright white because it actually looks kind of weird. It looks like you, like some, I, I don't know, it just looks weird. I don't know, to me it looks like you have some kind of alien situation going on, so I don't like it super duper white. This one is giving me just enough of a like flesh peeking out color. But also guys, let me say this too. If I was using it as like to make a design with it or something, that the fact that it's not super opaque might cause me a problem. But I like it like this because I'm using it like this. This is probably how I'm always going to use this white liner. Um, I have the Super Kiss Lip Plumping Gloss, which is this right here. And this one I think my sister bought for me. She gave me like a little packet a while back for just being a good sister or whatever, being supportive and all that crap. And so she gave me a little packet and I think this was in it, but I can't remember 100%. So, okay, so the full size of this is $19.99. I don't know who made it. I think it was like Benefit or it, it was somebody that was priced, not, not Benefit, I'm sorry, Buxom. It was somebody that is pretty pricey. So I was surprised when I looked it up and saw that I was like, really? I had no idea. So I'm going to outline this with the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in shade Bumble. This is the Wonder Gloss, Plumping Lip Gloss. Now y'all know I don't like a plumper or a pump up or anything that makes your lips look bigger than they are. My lips are already pretty big. I don't feel like I need a plumper, but since this, ooh, oh, smells good. Since this was a gift, I decided to use it. So this is like a kind of buttery, really light wash of like a kind of gold color. So I'm glad I did a, a lip liner under it because I think that'll accentuate it and bring it out a little more. I don't think it's a plumper in the sense like the lip injections are a plumper. Are the Jessica Simpson, uh, they had a dessert line a while back and she had a plumping lipstick. And when I tell you that crap burned the crap out of my face, I was so mad about it. And the whole line is gone now. So maybe, maybe I was the only one. But anyway, same thing with the Too Faced lip injections. They sting to plump. This one, I'm not feeling that from. So um, I'm assuming it may be a plumping look, like the shimmer in the middle, but it doesn't actually sting your lips to make them swell up. Like This is cute. All right, guys, so this is the finished look with all of these lovely new products that I bought and tried out for you guys. I want to go over a couple. I'm going to go one by one, but the first thing I want to go over is this Kat Von D Vegan Love Palette because I also want to swatch them for y'all. I don't want to like Kat Von D. I really don't like her as a person, but this palette is everything. I'm sorry. I really like it. And it takes a lot to convince me to like a glitter palette. So just to look at them again, I used Empathy and Activist on the lid. So that purple and that gold. And then I used Equality in the brow bone as a highlight. So I'm actually... Oop. This shirt is brand new. Hi. Just dropped a palette on my new shirt. Sentinent, this pretty like reddish color. I'm going to use that to dot my tear ducts. And I will say, I never agree with products when they tell me to uh, apply it with my finger. But I did with this one and it came out really, really good. I'm not going to lie to you. So anyway, I'm not going to swatch these shades. Actually, I'm going to show y'all like I always do what how much I'm planning to swatch. I don't want to do this. Okay, 
species first so i'm just gonna go forward and back species right here sentinel which i have on my eyes right now i put them in my tear duct wow look how pretty that's washed okay activist wow um, we have compassion all right and then we have liberation I know the idea behind this palette was that um, they wanted vegan beauty that was going to be bold and bright and hi, these are definitely. All right, so we have equality right here. Beautiful. That one is actually what I used um, in my brow bone today. And then we have Mercy, which is one of the most pigmented reds I've ever seen. Okay, that's my fault. The swatch is bad, but the Empathy which again, I use um, on my lid for most of my lid today. Then we have Sanctuary, which is this beautiful blue shade. Then we have Earthling, which is this really pretty green. So these are all of the swatches. These are the shades. They are beautiful. Yeah, I am going to have to give this one five out of five diamonds. I'm sorry. I wanted to give it four out of five because there are no matte shades, but the shimmers are so gorgeous. I don't really care that there's no matte shades in it, honestly. They're, like, these are shades. Honestly, I don't have anything else like these. Maybe this one I have an Urban Decay single, but that's it. All the rest of these are, like, insanely beautiful. So this one gets five out of five. Okay, the next product in the kind of just full face of new stuff one is the Infallible L'Oreal Paris 16 Hour Never Fail Eyeliner. So... This is the eyeliner. It is waterproof. It is not on my lids, on my inner rim anymore. So just due to the fact that it did not last the whole time, even though it's supposed to be waterproof, it's supposed to be 16 hour wear. And um, hi, I've been shooting for probably two hours and uh, um, it's completely gone. So I have to give this one, mm, I guess three out of five stars because it did not last. No, four out of five stars because it didn't last, but it was 90 cents. So, I mean, like it's not a pencil, so you don't have to sharpen it. So it doesn't drag or anything. It just slides on really nice. So that's that one. But it says here, ultra moisturize, intensively moisturizes, and it doesn't. It slides on like a regular balm, whatever. The Wonder Kiss Lip Plumping Gloss. So this is the gloss. I'm wearing it right now. I really like this one um it smells really good it doesn't last very long like i already had to reapply it in the last two hours but it is a gloss so that's kind of par for the course but for what it does i mean in this look it's beautiful and i feel like i'm going to be able to use it on a lot of different lipsticks with a bunch of different looks so i'm going to give this one five out of five diamonds because it's pretty good this is the benefit brow contour pro this retails for 30 dollars. i got it for what what did i say 12 i gotta give this y'all i think this is the lowest grade i've ever given a product on this channel i have to give this one two out of five stars because it's $30, okay? First of all, that's really expensive. The ideal of it, the concept is really cool. The actual product itself isn't that great. Like, I don't like, okay, so it gives you the lighter shade, a darker shade, a definer, and a highlighter. Here's my issue. My issue is not with the lighter or the darker one. It's with the definer and the highlighting shade. So these two shades, they are orange, first of all. I don't know why they're orange. I'm sure there's some kind of formula they came up with or somebody that was a color wheel that decided that this was going to go with the darker shade. I hate it. I've never in my life worn an orange highlighter. So I always use, which is funny because this is Benefit, I always use the Benefit Boing Concealer, Airbrush Concealer to carve out my brows. And I just, it's just, I didn't get it. I don't like it. It's hard to use. It's difficult to figure out if you don't have the directions with you. And I just, I don't know. It's just not my vibe. I don't like it very much benefit. Had I paid $30 for this crap, I would have been seething. This Black Beauty profile is on the great, the amazing, the everything Andre Leon Talley. So I was first familiar with Andre Leon Talley from his work at Vogue. He was the editor in large at Vogue for a very long time. He left there in 2014, I think, 2015. I'll get specs on that. Okay, so like anytime they were talking about New York Fashion Week, anything with Vogue, the editor at large and at Vogue, he was um kind of in a win towards like right-hand man, but he's like everything fashion. Like I remember um, I watched the original Sex in the City movie. I remember when Carrie was trying on the uh, wedding dresses and they cut to the side and Andre Leon Talley was sitting there with like this big huge Louis Vuitton trunk just kind of observing everything. And I was like, like they showed him and I was like, Andre Leon Talley. And like the guy on the side of me is like, the hell? So I've been a huge fan of his forever. I can't talk about everything because his career 
Okay, he is 70 years old now, and his career has spanned like the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, and he's still working today. So I can't go through every single thing, but um, you can see everything in the uh, documentary. Um, I think it's called The Gospel According to Andre. So Andre Leon Talley is a fashion journalist. He was also an international contributor okay, to a Russian magazine called Numero. Apparently that's like a big fashion magazine over there. I have no idea. He was there for a little while. Um, let me take y'all way back to the gap about who Andre Leon Talley is. So he was born in Washington, D.C. Um, his parents actually gave him to his grandmother in North Carolina. And he credits his grandmother with um, uh, like giving him his love for luxury, which I relate to a lot because my grandmother kind of did the same thing for me. My mom did too. His grandfather was a sharecropper. So for those of y'all that don't know what a sharecropper is, first of all, it's February. Go do your black history research. He grew up in North Carolina during Jim Crow. Again, if you don't know what Jim Crow is, the Jim Crow laws were, please go and look it up. Again, if it's February and I'm talking to y'all about this and y'all don't know what that is, we have an issue. But just go look it up. Big time segregation. Blacks can drink from this fountain. Whites can drink from this fountain. It seems like it's a long time ago, but really it's not that long ago. This man is still alive today and experienced all of that. So to come from those extraordinarily humble beginnings to be who he is today is it's freaking mind blowing. So after high school, he went to college. He got his bachelor of arts in French literature. And then he went to, he got a scholarship to go to Brown, to Brown University. And he got his master's in French lit as well. With his, I think his original plan was to teach. He claims that his love for fashion, his love for luxury came from his grandmother, but his love for fashion was sparked when he found a copy of Vogue in a library when he was, I think he said he was 10. He was young, whatever. He was young. I think it was 10. But so he went in the library. He found this copy of Vogue. He took it home. He was like devoured it and was just, um, he worked at the factory. Yes, like Andy Warhol, the factory. So for somebody that was an art student, if you know Andy Warhol, that is a big freaking deal. While he was there, he started writing for Andy Warhol's magazine, which was Interview. We still have Interview today. He worked for Women's Wear Daily. If you don't know what WWD is, it is like the fashion Bible. Like Vogue is a big deal too, but like women wear, Women's Wear Daily is like, like the fashion people do women's, women's wear daily. He worked for W, which we all know. We still have W now. And he also worked, um, obviously, at Vogue. So he ain't nothing to play with, okay? He's nothing to play with. He, uh, obviously, his name, like, he was the first African-American male tastemaker that kind of was like, I mean, he's like the guy. And I thought it was really cool because I started kind of reading more about him in preparation for this. I did not realize that while he was at Vogue, he really pushed some of the big designers, you know, Armani, uh, uh, Dolce & Gabbana, just like the top guys. He um, encouraged them to hire more models of color. Obviously, y'all know we're still super underrepresented. So for somebody that made it to not forget and come back and push the rest of us up there, that's a big deal. Also, I found out too that... I. Andre Leon Talley was the person that introduced Michelle Obama to Jason Wu. If y'all don't know about that, I mean, that put Jason Wu on the map. That blew him up here in America. And I just think that's really, really... Last thing I want to say about Andre Leon Talley, I could literally talk about him for three, four hours. The documentary I keep talking about, The Gospel According to Andre, debuted um, in 2018. But I think it was screened at the... Um, independent film festival um in 2015 but it wasn't massively released until 2018 and another cool thing that happened there's an andre leon tally exhibit that opened in 2011 i don't know if it's still there i don't know if it's still active at the um scad museum of art so to have an exhibit based on you that you curated in a museum of art any museum of art is such a big deal and i think it just kind of puts in perspective how big of a deal he is so a stunning glaring example of black beauty i'm just kind of honored to get to come on here and talk about him i don't care if three people watch this so i hope you enjoyed this profile in black beauty and like i said before please go watch the documentary because i couldn't cover everything in here and i will see you next time same glam time same glam channel next time here on diamonds and denim see y'all later bye